good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to another episode of Pixel Valve. Today I'm going to be discussing this Nikon lens. This Nikon lens is a trash find lens, which means that someone at some point has thrown this away, discarded it into the rubbish. It's been discarded because the lens, the actual glass elements, were hazy, so hazy that it became opaque. It was unusable. But it's a nice lens. I mean, it's a Nikon lens. Surely a little bit of a clean would solve that problem. It's. It looks like a lens from around about 2006 to 2009. And I think that because it's a silvery colour and that matches that kind of era. It's also a DX lens. So it's fairly modern. It's a modern lens and it looks exactly the same as my kit lens that came with my camera. My kit lens is an 18 to 55 lens. It's a very popular sort of uh, typical lens. This one is a 55 to 200 mil. So I'm going to try and repair it. That is where it gets interesting. The first thing I did to repair this lens, to, to attempt any repair at this lens of course, was to look at the front and I'm used to using vintage lenses, I'm used to repairing vintage lenses. So the first thing I did was to try and take off the front. And of course there's no there's no spanning wrench attachment, there's no screw and it seems to be a sealed unit. I removed the front plastic part which turned out to be nothing more than a sticker and it is a sealed unit, it's plastic. Nothing to undo. So then I turned the lens around and started digging into it from behind. Opening it up, I remove piece after piece and strip it down. Breaking a ribbon, an electronic ribbon, which I had to re-solder. And I did that and, you know, it works. But the overall feel that I got from this was that the lens was designed in such a way that is deliberately designed, I think, to make it difficult for anyone to repair. It's actually made in such a way that makes it almost impossible to repair. Once I'd stripped this down and actually got to the element, that's when I realised that I could have done it from the other way around, from the front. You see, had I have twisted this lens at the very front, and twisted the whole assembly that whole assembly would have come off and I could have accessed the actual lenses that way but never mind I put it all back together and everything seems to be working everything is working it was fine the only thing I had to do now was figure out how I was going to clean the lens because when I looked inside the other side of this lens. I noticed that it was all moulded together. The glass elements were moulded into the front of this lens. So there was no screw, no screw on the back, no, no way of pulling this lens out. I had to cut them out. So with a very sharp knife, I carefully sliced the outside skin of this moulding almost like I was peeling an apple for a child perhaps I then extracted the lenses cleaned them there was no fungus or anything it just seems to have been perhaps a case where the uh, some moisture from outside had found its way in which is strange really because if the lenses were sealed like this you'd expect that moisture wouldn't be able to get in there but it had and I was able to clean them, put them back, and then 
reseal that area back up again using a little bit of casting resin and painting it on slightly onto the edges. And it worked. So now I have a fully working lens again. It's a bit ugly, but it works. It's a pity it's not black to match my camera. So the next thing I want to do with this camera lens is take some photographs and see how good it is. And really, the best way to do that would be to compare it against another lens. And I think it's going to be interesting to do that if I use a vintage lens. And I, I do have a 200mm lens, but it's 40 years old. So I think it'd be interesting to compare the 40-year-old lens with this modern lens. You see, this modern lens, I would, I would still call it modern, even though it was from about 15 years ago, I think, isn't it now? So it's very likely to be roughly about 15 years old, this lens. And I would call it a modern lens because it's not constructed in the same way that the vintage lenses are. The, the, all the vintage lenses that I've ever seen, they're all solid metal with screwed in glass elements. They're easy to repair. They're easy to maintain. And they will definitely last. I mean, they've lasted 40 or 50 years. Sometimes these lenses have lasted 100 years. But I can't imagine these plastic modern lenses lasting that long. There's, n there's no way this Nikon lens is going to last 40 years. I, I doubt that this is going to last another 10 years. It's built in exactly the same way as my... DX lens. It looks identical almost in its construction. And I believe that a lot of other manufacturers are using the same sort of plastic technique, which is awful. Another awful thing I think about these lenses is that they don't have aperture rings, they have electronic aperture. And that's an awful thing too, isn't it? Because if these um, formats ever become obsolete like for example the M42 then at least we can still use the M42s but these lenses and some of them can be extremely expensive they're going to be they're going to be stuck here stuck in that era you know they're, they're not going to be able to have a second life which is really sad so all I've got to do now is compare this lens to see if, if it works and performs like I would expect it to. So I'm going to take it out into the field and take some shots and compare it to another similar, similar focal range lens. So why don't you come with me into the next video and we'll find out what happens.